All right, everyone, the European election results having come in, a very, very interesting picture that it paints because it conforms to what I predicted would happen with the EU three years ago, uh, which is that you're seeing the dissolution in, in European politics, I mean, of centrism. This was like the news of the night. Centrist block collapses. The left rises up, the so-called right, although it's not entirely it's not entirely homogenous across Euroskeptic groups but the the right or I would say Euroskepticism in general rises up and the people who are considered the old we shouldn't call them centrists what passes for a centrist a hundred years ago is totally different than what a moderate or a centrist is today it'll be totally different a hundred years there are views that so-called moderate individuals currently hold that'll be considered extreme and fringe even 50 or 60 years from now that's just the way that things work the better way to put it is just the establishment is dying. We've seen this before. This happened. This has happened and led to good things before, and it's happened and it's led to very bad things. Of course, the uh, sort of established neoliberal principles, or I'd say more totally liberal principles of like the Carter-esque era die off, uh, bringing forth the economic reforms and, and the good times of the 80s. Then you get some neocon warmongering later on, but that's a different story. We're under a paradigm shift now. Here in the United States, for example, the old guard, the old establishment is in the death throes. The old guard of the Democrats is barely fending off a bunch of fresh-faced progressives, so-called. The Trump populists have overrun the neocons of the Republican Party and brought about... Uh, depending on who you ask, either the dissolution of the of the Republican way or or reform that's making it healthy. You see the same in Europe. So when you look at the results, you see like in the UK, it's the best example. In the UK, it's starkly polarized between the upswelling of of uh, Europhile leftists, the Green and and Lib Dem movements especially, as opposed to Labour, that's also a leftist movement but sort of straddled the fence and isn't totally on board with Brexit or against it. Uh, and then you see the old guard conservatives completely wiped. They came in fifth place. <laughs> they came in fifth. This was the, the 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 doomsday scenario that everyone was talking about. They're like, well, at the end of the night, the Tories lose. Uh, but they're hoping to come in third, you know, behind the Liberal Democrats, or or at least fourth, maybe behind Labor. They're hoping that the Greens don't supplant them too. And they did, by a significant enough margin that now they've got to perform an autopsy of whether they're going to continue existing in the general elections. Meanwhile, the big winner of the night is Farage's Brexit party. Keep in mind, you've got to keep this in mind. Some people on the left, like the Europhiles, are like, well, Farage is evil and Brexit party is evil and ha ha ha. Well, most people ended up voting for Remainer parties, technically speaking. Arguably so, although that's some fuzzy mathematics when you're talking about the conservative and labor parties, because it's not, uh, and not everyone within those parties falls into one camp or the other. Like the Brexit party is 100% pro-Brexit. UKIP is pro-Brexit. The Greens are all anti-Brexit. And then I think all the liberal Democrats as well. Labor and the conservatives are sort of the 50-50 so-called centrists. Who are the big losers of the night? That can, again, this is just the collapse of the so-called center, which is just the collapse of the current order, which is a good and positive thing, I think. I, I don't think it leads to, like, my Reich or something like that. I think that it leads to reform within Europe, the dissolution of the EU, or at least its reduction into smaller blocks that will be better a, a, uh, able to effectively manage military forces, trade, politics in general, certainly economics. I think it'll be a healthy thing for Europe. See, I look at Europe and I say, well, I want, you know, people there to be happy and to have wealth and stuff. I don't have any problem with Europeans, so I'm hoping the EU in, in its current functional state goes away. The Brexit party, led by Farage, wins big. They get about a third of the vote. That's huge. <laughs> they, 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 they beat up. Labour and, and the Tories combined didn't come close to their totals, uh, and so causing plenty of salt among other people. It's funny how the Conservatives are willing to admit that they got, got whacked hard, and the left is still rambling about how the Brexit party still got less than the leftist parties combined or something. You got to keep in mind, though, Farage's new party only has one platform, and that's we want a Brexit. We're pro Brexit. That's the only platform that they had, and yet they came in by far in first. They had, <laughs> they, while they campaigned really hard, they were only formed, what was it, like a couple of months ago. They're a very, very new party. They don't even have a, an official manifesto, which I guess is a big thing in the UK for there to be like a special handbook to read about the party or a little pamphlet or whatever. They don't even have that. They have nothing. They've got Nigel Farage and that's it. Meanwhile, conversely, UKIP totally collapsing. Uh, uh, did, do they have any representation? I don't think they have any representation. I think they lost it all. 
it would be nice to see <clears throat> UKIP absorb into the Brexit party because there doesn't need to be any bad blood. Like um, what Farage did is say, look, I stand for Brexit, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but he got he got upset, I think, specifically about Tommy Robinson becoming a UKIPper. Uh, he shouldn't have done that. He should have said, well, you know, fundamentally free speech is a goal for Europe. You know, I have to agree with somebody and, and he doesn't represent our official views, but, you know, he can join the party. Uh, and he should have just stayed in control. I think uh, Farage essentially uh, left because there were people who wanted someone else to take the reins. Well, I guess he's he's the one that's laughing at the end of the night. It's funny to see people trying to dilute the actual victory that was the Brexit Party movement, I suppose. Meanwhile, we also have Salvini's people doing well in Italy. We have Le Pen's uh, edging out Macron, her, her nationalistic uh, movement, which is not a right-wing movement. She's on the left economically. And in some moral cases, she's not hard right or anything. She's simply a nativist populist. She believes in having French sovereignty. This is considered an extreme fringe view in France, which I think is the reason why such parties are rising up, because people feel alienated. Orban, his, he uh, manages to succeed. Not only did Orban's nationalistic movement win, <laughs> but they got more than half the votes. Everyone else combined couldn't beat them. And so here are four cases of significant wins for Euroscepticism. You also have Europhile movements, especially further left ones, rising up. It's formulaic. It is the same no matter which one of these elections you're looking at as of yesterday. In all of these cases that I've seen, at least, you have the rise of polarized groups. Groups that are considered outside of the establishment. They tend to be newer, a lot of younger, more activistic principles, more tech literate maybe, which could be why they're winning. Uh, and you see like the old guard, center left, center right, so-called collapsing systemically. We see that here in US politics too. Now don't we, the old established neoliberals, uh, the only reason that they're able to hang on to power right now over the Democratic Party is because of corporate money essentially. That's the only thing that's keeping Bernie Sanders from being their nominee right now, which is hysterical to me. On the Republican side, because they didn't have a superdelegate system, by the way, a very good idea that they didn't, this is why they won in 2016, because they looked more above board, they get Trump, populism. You've got the Rand Paul sort of libertarian upswelling too from years ago. That was the foreshock to the coming paradigm. You've got libertarian principles having been uh, injected within the Republican Party, and not just on an economic basis. I think that's a good thing. <clears throat> You're going to see more of this in Europe too, as of the next round of elections, European, general, whatever they may be. You're going to see people, what happens is, you see an upswelling of like a Euroskeptic, a far-right group, so-called, or a nationalistic group. All the left starts to harangue and says, look at those scary fringe people over there. You have to join us because the old left can't save you. Look at these boring old corporatists. What are they doing about it? They're not willing to get into the streets and get muddy, but we are. Take up the black banner. And so they start organizing. The people on the right say, look, center right, the old guard conservatives can't save you from the commies over there. Can't save you because they're not willing to get down in the trenches and they're not willing to put on boots and kick some commie ass. But we are, so let's go fucking get our guns. And pretty soon you have a situation where things get kind of tense. Now this has happened over and over. It's, it's, it's the boom and bust cycle of the political paradigm. It's not going to stop. The old establishment will be crushed underfoot. That's a good thing. What you should hope for is that sane movements, classically liberal movements that understand human rights, movements that are, that are maybe they're on the left, but they care about workers and stuff. They don't want all the open borders bullshit that caused this paradigm shift in the first place. Uh, Right-wing groups that don't want to jackboot through the streets and simply want a restoration of some traditionalistic order. Those are the groups you should be fighting alongside, hoping that they win. The longer the old political establishment is allowed to cling to the vestiges of its old power, the more extreme those groups will tend to be, because they will enter a purity spiral. See, they're being fed by people who are impatient. Fundamentally, they're scared, and they're impatient. They want change. Old guard won't give it to them. So when they rally behind Nigel Farage, if no change happens, pretty soon they say, okay, Farage can't do it. Maybe Tommy Robinson can do it. They get a little bit more actually, you know, nativistic. They go with Tommy Robinson. Nothing changes. They say, well, Nothing's going to help us. Okay, it's time to get the Molotov cocktail. And then you end up with civil wars and rev violent overthrows and shit like that. And then you see cultures burned to the ground. You see, you see thousand-year-old statues getting defaced and shit like that. We're already in the throes of an advanced political paradigm shift. My advice to all political, uh, politically-minded people is, yeah, you should side with the outsiders. Yeah, you should join uh, you know, some outside group. 
but choose carefully <laughs> to make sure that it's make sure that it's not the literal Nazi, so to speak, or you know the communists over there, because those groups, if they end up getting more prominent, number one, any change they bring will tend to be malevolent. It can be violent, and then it comes about through violence, even if it's not. Even if it's positive change, it comes about through blood. Uh, it's it's sort of the blood and soil thing, or the Marx, you know, revolution forever sort of ideology, I guess. So much easier to try to reform an existing system if there are enough people willing to put in the effort to do it. The problem is that impatient people that are alienated socially have difficulties with such things. It's an age-old struggle. That's about all. Peace out.